Just a quick heads up, if you skip ahead, you'll have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. So please, watch the explanation section carefully and don't skip ahead. Though, there are timestamps in the description. Considering how many primary weapons Warframe has, it is quite difficult to compare and decide which weapon you should use. And I really, really dislike opinions in such matters. So I've spent the past 4 months working on a system to evaluate weapons as accurately as possible and compare them. Those of you who watched this video will know what I'm talking about. There are two kinds of tests, single target and AoE. I have defined an AoE weapon as any weapon that can achieve at least 6 meters of damage radius. Single target test. This is how a single target test result should look like. Weapon name, weapon image, and the build are self-explanatory. Then we have this chart full of kill times. Each faction has three different tests, normal, heavy, and solo. This is what they consist of. The normal test group represents an average mission. Then the heavy test group is the heavy part of the normal test group tested separately. The third test is the solo slash consistency test. The solo test result itself is not important as it's only one unit and not representative of the whole faction. What we want is a consistency score. It is a number from 100 to negative infinity. If the kill time is always the same, it will be 100. And the more inconsistent the kill time, the lower that number gets. Next to it, we have top and bottom 5%, which all together should give you a solid idea about the randomness you can expect in the performance, be it due to reload, critical stats, or other factors like hunter munition. All these numbers are kill times, so the lower the better. The normal and heavy test results are combined to generate a sum value. This is how we compare weapons for the most part. However, since the code doesn't understand recoil and accuracy, for inaccurate or high recoil weapons, some will show a much higher damage output than they actually have. So that is to be considered when comparing weapons. AOE test. Unlike the single target, the AOE test involves only six test groups, those being the AOE and solo variant of the three factions. Since AOE weapons have fall off, where the enemies are in relation to the impact point is important. So I have separated the units in the normal test to three groups. First group are the heavy units, which are closest to the impact point. Then we have the medium units slightly further, and the light units are the furthest. To be exact, they are situated as such. In this test, we will keep shooting at the same point until all enemies are dead. As for the solo test, unlike the AoE test group, which is always body shots, this one is always headshots, unless that is literally impossible. While getting the said headshots may be incredibly difficult due to low accuracy, we will still assume all shots connect. This is mostly for comparison purposes and getting a consistency score. In the AoE test, we combine the normal test values to generate the sum, so it is inherently smaller than the single target test group. Though even if both tests had identical enemy counts, we still couldn't directly compare them, so do not attempt to compare AOE weapons with non-AOE weapons. But as a general rule of thumb, single target weapons deal a lot more damage to their one target than AOE weapons do to each of their targets. Automatic versus semi-automatic. As you'll see later, almost unanimously fully automatic weapons get much better results than the semi-automatic weapons. But in terms of actual gameplay, they're much closer in performance. The reason for this is human accuracy and reflexes. While for a semi-automatic weapon, you only have to get the crosshair on target and pull the trigger, for an automatic weapon, you have to perfectly track the target for a period of time for it to be damaged. As such, the weapons themselves have been balanced differently. Thus, in ideal situations such as my tests, automatic weapons get an edge. So refrain from comparing semi-automatic and automatic weapons by their sum alone. From mass rank 0 all the way up to 7, I'm going to provide builds without any form or catalyst, with mods that you would expect your average new player to have, and test them on increasing levels from 16 to 40. But I will show what their sum would be at level 40 for purposes of comparison. As soon as we hit mass rank 8, I'm going to assume you have everything there is to have and test on level 100 enemies. There are three mods that I need to address. Hunter Munition, Galvanized Crit Chance, and Internal Bleeding. For the two Gauzing Slash, there is a major issue with both their performance and how I calculate kill times. The very first Slash proc happens one full second after you proc Slash, and for it to do actually meaningful damage, it needs two or three seconds. Do you know what that means? It means unless your kill time on heavies are above 2.5 seconds, there is no point to slash. 
While you may say just stop shooting the guy, how the hell is the code supposed to know when to stop shooting? It is so incredibly complex that I have a feeling it is a much better idea to just go for straight up kills than do backwards math for every goddamn target. And the code has massively sided with me on that point. As for galvanized critical chance. It just isn't sustainable. It is such a massive pain to just keep your weapon useful that even attempting to use it is a wasted effort. Don't even bother commenting about it. Just seeing this mod makes me want to smack the guy who made it. That's all the explanation I had to offer. Feel free to ask me if you had further questions. I do read all comments. Mastery Rank 0 MK1 Paris, being literally the first weapon you can get in the game, most people assume it is a bad weapon. But of course, it is very capable. If you don't believe me, link in the cards. Pay attention to the two different sum values we have. The top one is just like the chart, level 16. And the bottom one is level 40, for purposes of comparison, as I said before. Burston. If I hadn't made the code to test weapons, I would have never known Burston is this good. It actually surprised me to see that this weapon performs better than MK1 Paris, though only at level 16 and not at 40. But I don't think you will see any level 40 units at Master Rank 0, so take from that what you will. Master Rank 1 Karak while not as good as the beast that is Burston, it can easily hold its own. In terms of mathematical power, this is the build you should be using. But if you can't handle constant reloads, you can swap the fire rate for another mod. Since I don't think you have a heat or toxin 90 mod this early, this is what a magnetic one looks like. Obviously, it is not as good. Mastery Rank 2 Boltor. This is the weapon that one-ups Burston. Not by a lot though, but still, being fully automatic instead of burst is quite lovely. I recommend it. Mastery Rank 3 Paris. While not amazing at dealing with hordes of enemies, the normal version of Paris is a force to be reckoned with. Thus far, nothing has gotten this low as some at level 40. Mastery Rank 4 Dera. Shocking. You wouldn't expect this weapon to be very good. It breaks the sum record, and what can I say except corpus engineering is dominant. Quanta. Would you look at that? Another corpus weapon here to shock us by breaking the record again. Or maybe not, it all depends on you having a Toxin 90 mod. But if you don't have it, then you should resort to a Heat 90, which performs about 8% worse than a Dera. But if you ask me, it looks a lot cooler, and that's a plus. Heck, that's as far as the corpus can go without being utterly defeated by the Grenier. This weapon firmly proves that those greedy corpus can do anything in the face of true power, if you have the augment. But I'm gonna assume you have it. And would you look at that, the record is broken again. Many people stick to this weapon up to Master Rank 7 and I can't blame them. Mastery Rank 5 Dread while technically it is possible to get this weapon at Master Rank 5, most of you won't get it this early. But the sad thing is, even now, it isn't the best weapon. But as far as bows go, it's quite solid. It's a sad story, but while bows do a lot of damage per hit, if you land perfect headshots, they simply don't have enough fire rate to be competitive weapons. Ignis. This is the first weapon in the 
limited AOE category. Weapons with more damage than AOE weapons, but with less coverage. I'll have to test them as single target weapons, but suffice to say, most limited AOE weapons are included since it is quite obvious they deserve the spot. Comb. If this weapon was fully accurate and didn't have that spool up, it would break the record again. But since it has some accuracy issues and a long spool up, which I have not implemented by the way, I am just gonna say it lands body shot, that should be closer to its real performance. Tonkor. While I am mentioning this weapon, the sole reason is it being AoE. Do not attempt to use this on anything with armor as it really doesn't do very well. Unless you want to invest in a catalyst in some forma, but I wouldn't recommend it. Mastery rank 6. Rubico, our first sniper. Not exactly the most usable weapon in the game, but it is acceptable. If you like snipers, you'll like this thing. Flux Rifle, a very interesting weapon. This is the first weapon we encounter with recharge mechanics. In other words, they lie about the reload times. The number you see in the arsenal is just the reload delay, then the true reload starts. And you wanna know something interesting? That true reload will get longer and longer if you increase your magazine size, and it doesn't get any benefit from mods like reload. But in terms of performance, this weapon is solid, really. Scourge. This is our first double staged weapon, which means it will get a lot more status effects. Not that it matters, this thing has two innate polarities which allow for an amazing build without any forma. Additionally, being a spear gun means you can throw the weapon. Not exactly a damage tool, but hey, easy headshots am I right? Mastery rank 7. Argonac, a very solid weapon with an interesting gimmick. I really wish this thing had a prime variant with a much bigger magazine and more fire rate, but until that happens, we can still shred some level 40s with it. The automatic mode is the main mode, the semi mode really doesn't do enough damage to compensate for the reduced fire rate. Baza. I am going to mention this weapon, but don't use it unless you want to invest into it. And there is a good chance you might want to do that. I will mention this weapon again at MR8 with a full build. Convectrix. While I haven't implemented this thing's spool up, I can't deny that it holds absurd damage output. If you can handle this thing's playstyle, you will love it. But if you're like me and cannot handle holding fire button all the goddamn time, then you will hate it. Javlock. Quite a clunky weapon, but just look at the damage it puts out. And this time, there is some validity in using the throw as a damage tool, only against very light units though. I find it really interesting how you would think you should hold the fire button, but all you need is tap it. Parasist. It has a similar performance to Convectrix and Javlock, but with a lot more usability. I quite like this weapon. It does have an alt fire, but in terms of performance, let's just say it doesn't exist. Sobek, an automatic shotgun, which is really surprising given how this weapon doesn't have a lot of fire rate, but hey, we can give it fire rate later and see how it does. Before we continue to master rank 8, let's hear a quick message from me. While I probably will make a secondary and melee version of this, I no longer have the adequate time to farm platinum, so if anyone wanted to assist for a limited time my account gift receive is set to all, but don't feel obligated. Just watching the video is plenty, but dropping a like and subscribing would be appreciated as well.
Mastery rank 8. Sobek. Would you look at that? It's already time. It's actually quite unbelievable. No one expected this weapon to perform this well, and that includes me. We have a few shotguns in this mastery rank and they pack a much bigger punch, but none of them have enough fire rate to be capable of beating this bad boy in kill times. Unless you account for one of them being kinda limited AoE. Baza. While this weapon wasn't worth using without a full build, with a full build, it beats everything else. However, it does have some usability issues. But it more than makes up for it by raw damage output. If you really want to get the most out of this weapon, try not to hold the fire. Try and go for perfect headshots in adequate bursts. Stradivar. From all the weapons with two fire modes, this one has the closest damage output between the two. Usually in such cases, the auto is all you use and the semi is useless. But this time, the semi mode has enough fire rate to have a similar damage output. Which means if you wanted to, you can use the semi mode for trash mobs and use the full auto for heavier units. But generally I just stick to the auto since it has slightly better overall performance. And it simply is more fun. Fulmin. Now here, we have a weapon with drastically different fire modes. An auto mode for heavy units and a limited AoE semi mode to take care of the trash mob. The problem is that switch time. If it was instant, like Stradivar, I would love this weapon. But it takes way too long, which makes you pick either auto or semi. And that 3 second reload really annoys me. But it does perform, so it's only fair. Glaxion. Now here is one that no one expected. While it doesn't have as high a potential as other automatic weapons in this mastery rank, you can't deny that most of those weapons had really bad consistency which gives this an edge. Compared to using Baza or Fulmin, I would much rather use this. The consistency this provides is a lot more important in a mission. Give it a try, you won't regret it. Corin. Now here is a big boy damage dealer. It has incredible single target damage but it really lacks in terms of fire rate and magazine. So don't expect it to be amazing in a survival but when you wanted big boy single target damage, this is a very good pick. While I would say it's all fire being AoE makes up for the lack of fire rate, the reality is that thing can't kill anything stronger than a butcher. So just pretend it doesn't have an all fire. Exorgis. While Corinth is accurate and has a lot of crit stats, this is the opposite. Is not as accurate and doesn't have any critical stats at all. Which is funny, because in terms of single target damage, they are either identical or Exorgis has an edge. But Exorgis also happens to be limited AoE. It has infinite body punch through. I have two builds for this weapon. One with a magazine of 3 and another with 2 but more damage per hit. Depending on how you want to use the weapon, either can be considered better due to consistency differences. Paris Prime. If I'm not mistaken, this is the only weapon in game that has 9 damage mods in one build. Quite interesting. But even with that, being a bow unable to get a magazine of 2, the fire rate and charge time are not good enough, which makes this weapon unappealing in terms of performance. I only mention most bows because I would feel bad otherwise. Comorex. While we had a few unexpected weapons, even after I saw this weapon's performance, I was still in disbelief. It just doesn't make sense. This weapon has a better performance than automatic fullman, and it's a semi-automatic sniper, and the second zoom makes it limited AoE. This is simply mind-blowing. Now just think of a Revenated version. It would be glorious. Sedo. While everyone saw this weapon coming, I really doubt you guys can guess where it sits in terms of performance. Many seem to think this is the best weapon in the game, but I'm not so sure. Calculating this weapon's damage output is so goddamn difficult that even after 2 weeks of working on it, I had to settle for an average between 2 states rather than a straight up accurate answer. So have a look at this. This weapon's performance is between these two. Where exactly? depends on the mission. But for the sake of your sanity, I'm just going to assume exactly in the middle. While it is good, it's not the best weapon in the game, as expected. Not that such a thing exists to begin with. Lens. 
a relic of a bygone era, but that doesn't mean it's bad. This is one of few weapons that get a good boost from hunter munition, and the sole reason for that is how little stylish chance this thing has. Like no kidding, even getting one viral proc is not a given. But my biggest problem with it is that delay. That delay makes this weapon half as good as it would have been otherwise. The fact that it still makes the list is quite impressive. Acceltra. This is a very bizarre weapon. By my own definition, this is not an AoE weapon unless I use Prime Firestorm on it. Unless I have a ton, I cannot properly test this weapon. In other words, I have two builds, but I can only evaluate one of them. Test them yourself and pick whichever you want. Mastery Rank 9 Ignis Wraith This is a limited AoE weapon that breaks the record previously held by Baza in fully automatic weapons. Depending on how you look at it, you may call it quite an impressive achievement, or maybe quite an impressive blunder in terms of balancing. Phantasma This weapon. Back in the old days, I adored it. But now, I can't stand it. This is ridiculous. This is a limited AOE weapon with such a low sum, it's unbelievable. And that's not all. The higher the levels go, the more impressive this weapon becomes compared to everything else. At level 100, it can just kill everything by sheer base damage. But at higher levels, when that doesn't matter, it has a heat build that is linearly scaling to infinity. I would like this weapon to get nerfed, thank you very much. Mastery rank 10. DaiQ. Well, would you look at that, another bow. But this time, it can't even do the one thing that bows did to help them deal with hordes. That would be uncharged shots. This weapon can only do charged shots, which means the low fire rate problem that bows are plagued with is further amplified. It has a lot of damage, but that doesn't mean much. Amprex. It's great performance aside, if just saying it's a chain lightning gun is not enough, then I don't know what is. While granted, the chain side of this weapon merely helps out with status effects, but still. It is better than being completely single target. Astilla. This is a solid weapon, but it has two issues holding it back from being amazing. Two issues, which you can only fix one. It has too much recoil and it doesn't have enough ammo, which means Either you fix the recoil to get some sick headshots, or you fix the ammo issue. Either way, you won't have the best experience. But in terms of performance, it is very capable. Baza Prime. Now here is a beast, an unrelenting hunter, blasting enemy heads off their shoulders, blood splatters and brains fly. This weapon not only has a lot of damage, but also has a very minimal recoil as well as a godly accuracy. This is one of my favorite automatic hit scan rifles. And to think, upon its release people said it is not strong enough, because it didn't have a big enough of a boost compared to the normal variant. If you rewatch their complaints after having measured this weapon, it becomes quite funny. Quanta Vandal While on the surface this weapon may not look like much, considering its performance and the fact that it has a 5 out of 5 ribbon disposition, it is not hard to see this weapon becoming absolutely absurd with a ribbon. Not that it needs one. As far as useless alt fires go, this one is quite interesting at least, but certainly not a competitive fire mode. Tenora. Is it a great weapon? Absolutely. Is it as good as its sum suggests? No. Due to that spool up. I would say it is around 10% worse than the sum would make you believe. The biggest issue is that horrible accuracy when you start shooting and not the slower fire rate. Which means you gotta constantly fire, which I despise. I much rather go for few but very accurate shots. Not my favorite, but just think of this. If this is getting some values close to Baza Prime, what will the Prime version get? Mastery Rank 11 Boar Prime What a bizarre weapon. It is a fully automatic shotgun with some of the worst accuracy ever, but its inaccuracy is bizarre as if you look closely, you'll notice quite a pattern after some initial normal spread. Can't exactly say it can do full headshots? But when you account for that bizarre spread, it's actually quite possible to get some headshots if you know how to aim it. So I would say it is between the two results that I show.
phage. This is very similar to Convectrix. I really dislike that and I also dislike this. And its sum doesn't account for its spool up. But if you're okay with this weird kind of spool up, can't deny this thing absolutely annihilates. Prisma Gorgon. Talk about abusing the way the code works to get an amazing sum. But with that said, it is not a bad weapon either. Though it can't really get consistent headshots and it has a lot of recoil as well as a spool up. But hey, it is actually a lot better than I would have ever thought. I really consider this a garbage weapon before I tested it. Prisma Gracata. Oh boy, Clem would be proud. This thing is shockingly powerful and has a ridiculous kick to it. Like really, even with a recoil mod, it is still difficult to use it. But the question is, does it deliver? Yes, absolutely. Synapse. If you like big crits, this is your weapon. It has some absurd single target damage paired with a pretty big magazine which means you get to see as many crits as you want and watch as anything in front of this weapon just melts. Mastery Rank 12 Rakta Cernos My dislike toward bows is pretty obvious but this? This is my baby. If you master the timing on this weapon, it just makes you feel like Rambo. What can I say? I just like this thing a lot. And without a doubt, as far as bows go, this is the best. Rubico Prime. It is quite funny that it can't handle hordes as well as Comorex, and Comorex also had a limited AoE fire. But in terms of raw single target damage output, can't say this doesn't perform. Supra. I never really thought much of the default Supra. I always thought Vandal was good, but not the base. And here we are. This thing is powerful. I did not expect this. Telos Boltor. I don't think I ever thought of this weapon as more than mastery fodder. Guess it pays to be capable of measuring such things because I love it. When a weapon no one expected to be good turns out amazing, I automatically like it three times as much. Vaycor Heck. Back to back to back. Weapons that I didn't think much of, but this time, I couldn't be more wrong. If I'm not mistaken, as far as semi-automatic shotguns go, this has the lowest sum there is. Who would have thought? Not me, that's for sure. Mastery Rank 13 Bubonico. This is what Phantasma should have been. It has very similar performance, but that thing was limited AoE, and this is single target with a much better alt fire. This way you can use the alt fire for trash mob and the main fire for heavy units. Unless you have a bright energy color, in which case you'll go blind instead of killing the enemies. Tromna. The best way to describe how utterly absurd this weapon is would be to call it a powerhouse. The main fire is incredibly consistent, powerful, and just reliable. It has such a big magazine that even a 5 second reload is nothing. You can do an entire mission without reloading, and every 5 kill, you can treat yourself to one of the most damaging and THE most unreliable alt fire in the game. Sometimes you'll drop the alt fire and it just kills everything, and other times it gets stuck on geometry and you get like one kill. Mastery Rank 14. Astilla Prime. A lot have happened between Astilla and its Prime counterpart. We have a lot more damage, a much better performance, but do you know what didn't change? That goddamn problem of pick either recoil or ammo. Without ammo, the weapon becomes nearly unusable. 
I hate to make this choice, but ammo it is. Corinth Prime. While Corinth Prime might not look very strong, when you consider how much single target damage it has, as well as one of, if not the strongest AoE alt fire among shotguns, you can see how this is my favorite. If you see a heavy, just headshot it. Anything else? Spam that alt fire. Here's a fun fact. Every time I use a primed reload mod on a shotgun, you can swap it for primed magazine or the other way around. They're practically identical. See which one you like more. Supra Vandal. Getting an under 20 sum is a legendary feat that only a handful of weapons can achieve. Well granted, this weapon probably gets slightly more than it deserves due to that spool up. It doesn't change the fact that this is a legendary weapon. So go out and prove that corpus engineering is dominant. Tenora Prime, another legendary weapon. Comparing to Supra Vandal, this thing's spool up is way worse. But it does get a better sum, so it is arguable. Nonetheless, this is as far as non-limited AOE weapons get, so I commend it for that. A true legend. Mastery Rank 15 Proboscis Cernos. This weapon. It is absurd. I can't even think how ridiculous it would be if it didn't have that delay between hit and explosion. Since even with that, this is one of the best AOE weapons in game, I would say there is only two that beat it. And if we don't count that delay, this becomes on par with the best. But wait a second, since this thing brings enemies close to the center, it doesn't suffer a lot of falloff, which means at a high enough level, it might beat even the best. Kuva and Tenet Weapons Kuva Karak. I personally have a heat variant, but if you want to be in an ideal situation for level 100, you should get a radiation one. I never thought much of Karak, but a sum of 19.85 sure is a legendary performance, and this time, no annoying spool ups. Kuva Dragoon. This is a really interesting weapon. You can use charge shot to take care of heavier units and you can just spam the uncharged version for lighter units. And if you get that exilus augment for it, your shot will bounce all over the place, further increasing your damage. Kuva Hex While in terms of sum, this loses to Kuva Dracoon, which loses to the champion which is Vake or Hex, overall, it is quite okay. A lot more damage but a lot less fire rate and not needing to charge up like Dragoon is certainly a plus. Kuva Brahma. This weapon. Dear God, why is this even a thing? Of all weapons to make a Kuva variant of, they had to make this monstrosity. As usual, I have two builds for this. One with more AoE and one with more damage. Against level 100 enemies, you can bullet jump up and before you hit the ground, kill 40 enemies. While the ammo pool of only 5 is quite low, with an arcane merciless that goes to 10. But even at 5, since each shot replenishes its cost by the loot drops, it is certainly spammable. Kuva Tankor. While this is not as ridiculous as Kuva Brahma, it is certainly nothing short of a monster itself. And since this is not a bow, that means we can get a magazine higher than one, which makes this weapon capable of bigger bursts of damage at the cost of a longer reload. Kuva Ogres. Now this one, I really like it. This is one of the most unique weapons in this game. It has what I would call area denial, which means where you shoot, will be a source of damage for a period of time. In missions like defense, if you keep shooting at choke points, the mission will basically play itself. It is also incredibly powerful at survival and especially so at steel path. Kuva Comb. While I would still say this is way too inaccurate for my taste, there is no denying that in terms of performance, this thing is nearly legendary. The first result is assuming full headshots, and the second one is body shots. Kuva Hind. This is probably my favorite burst weapon in the game. The best mode is just 
devastating. It easily makes itself known as the legendary burst rifle. While the other two modes are certainly capable, the burst has the lowest sum, which I can't argue with. It's just brilliant. Kuva Quartak. While this weapon is powerful, its full auto is worse than Heinz. And that ain't even the Heinz strong point. But I guess its semi auto is on par with Heinz, so that's something. But this weapon is certainly not on my favorites list. Tenet Flux Rifle. Well, this is kinda embarrassing. It really makes a big difference when you can measure your builds. For example, if you have a look at my Tenet video, link in the cards, you'll see the absolute abomination of a build that I recommend. It. But when you test your builds, that is when you can truly see what is THE build. And if you ask me, this is the most powerful automatic rifle there is, a true legend. Tenet Tetra. I think I owe an apology to this weapon. In my Tenet video, I really insulted it. And I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. This is a near legendary weapon. While it doesn't have as much fire rate as Flux, it certainly hits like a truck. It's kinda a shame that the cheese tactic with this weapon's alt fire is no longer a thing. If you wanna see the glory days, I showed it in my tenant video. But nonetheless, this thing's AoE is certainly not bad. Tenet Arcoplasmor. If I count this weapon as a single target weapon, due to the fact that it cannot headshot, it will really, really look bad. But I'm going to consider this weapon as an honorary 6 meter radius AoE weapon, with no falloff. And that is when you can see what this weapon really can do. It is certainly a beast. Tenet Envoy. While this weapon may not have the legendary performance of a Brahma, I think that gimmick more than makes up for it. I had more fun using this weapon than I ever had using Brahma. And have you noticed how this sends corpses flying? I recommend this weapon a lot. It is far more balanced and keeps the gameplay engaging. What you saw is the work of 4 months and 14,000 lines of code. And the decision was made by you guys in a vote I held. If you want to be part of the future votes, be sure to subscribe so you get the community post in your feed. Or you could join my Discord server to talk to me directly. I often share behind the scenes material in my Discord server and talk about what I'm working on. My fellows knew about this project since the day I started working on it. Well. You watch till the very end. May I interest you in one of these videos? Maybe this one? It's my favorite.